hello everyone, it's Michelle Mahar here and I'm joined with Josh, Josh Perry this afternoon. Thank you so much, Josh, for giving me your time to talk about uh, keeping a positive mindset while pivoting in your life and your business. Uh, again, uh, thank you so much for joining me. If you wanna give us a few words about uh, who you are and what you're all about. Yeah, for sure. And thank you, Michelle, for your time as well. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to share. And I guess the long story short, I'm a former professional BMX athlete and multiple brain tumor survivor that uh, decided to walk away from the dream I was living to help people optimize their lives the best they could just through the things I learned. So I started a business kind of on a whim of just passion and purpose to help people look, feel, think, and perform the best they can. All right. And when did you start this business? Uh, 2017, somewhere in there, unofficially. Okay. I don't, I don't know right. the exact month. Uh, yeah. Collected so, a dollar and made the business, but yeah, it was in that year because that's the year I decided to stop competing. Right. Okay. All right. And 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 um, you basically were go doing speaking engagements, from what I understand. Uh, when when we got shut down, you were actually not um, uh, here, like home. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I was I was traveling a bunch. It's it's actually been funny this year, um, being home six or seven months now. Uh, as long as I've been home more than like two weeks since I was 14, um, unless I was injured and I wasn't traveling because of the injury. Right. And so just uh, being home for more than a month, it's just been, it's been, it's been interesting. Um, it's been really good being able to spend time with my girlfriend and our, um, our dog who's still in a puppy phase. So uh, it's been good that way to take more time to slow down, to let old lingering injuries heal and to reflect um, on my mental and emotional state and, you know, the life that I, I want and, you know, how I'm living my life. So it's, it's been good in that, that manner. But like you said, speaking engagements, I had a bunch lined up this year. And um, of course, they're all canceled. Um, they were trying to postpone them. But then as yeah. things kept progressing, they just, all right, we're just going to cancel it because we don't know what's going on. Right. Yes. And that was the case for me with vendor shows that I had planned. Um, initially, they were postponed because when we first got shut down here, it was March break for the kids. And then they extended. So then they said the school would be shut down another two weeks. So that it was three weeks in total. And, and then the plan was the beginning of April, they'd go back to school. And then of course that got extended another month to the beginning of May. And, and now here we sit at um, middle of November and we're, you know, basically, um, everything's kind of continuing with uh, restaurants not being open inside and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it is what it is. And we're all just trying to do our best to manage, you know, the, uh, the circumstances and, you know, like you, you mentioned pivoting, just kind of how you live your life in general, whether it be professionally or personally. Yes. Cause a lot of people have taken this time to develop some new habits, whether it be, meditating on a daily basis. Um, so many people were walking, just getting out and walking in nature. Uh, people that, you know, never had the time or at least made the uh, claim that they didn't have yeah. the time. Of course, we have the same 24 hours in the day as we did before. It's just, it wasn't a priority. And now when people, especially when we were really shut down and there was nothing, uh, you know, nothing to do and you were only supposed to be going out to the grocery store to get the the necessary things people went out walking and actually noticed nature and heard the birds and noticed the squirrels and saw the you know like back in the spring saw the buds coming on the trees and things like that which uh you know just rushing from place to place you never took the time to to notice those things yeah yeah and i, I think this is just another example of an experience that you'll have two different types of people that'll emerge from it, you know, and it's just like the same experiences in the past. You're really going to have people that are going to be, like you said, more aware of things, you know, they're going to be more aware of themselves, more aware of the circumstances, their environment, and choose how they want to move forward in a manner that's going to better serve them and their ideal version of the life that they hold in their mind. Or people are going to see it the other way, which is just a time to be lazy, to complain, to, you know, say this year sucks and, you know, this and that. But um, it, the choice is always there. It's just a matter of wanting to uh, to pick one that's going to better serve you in that moment than just to sit back and complain. Right, definitely. This has been it's it's really shown um, shown us this year because I remember at the beginning of this talking to people, it was all about when we get back to normal, when we get back to normal, and 
and that and and some people were waiting yeah um and and some people are still waiting and and we know at this point in time that there is no going back to normal as such nor do we want to because really that wasn't uh that wasn't really serving us well i think that this whole virus and pandemic has given us all the chance to sit back and and have time to actually be with ourselves and determine what our values are and what's important to us and and realize the things that we may have taken for granted and um nature being one of them right the, yeah and the way you were it was perfect you know waiting there, there's people that are acting there's people that are waiting or planning and yes the same thing and just like i said like before covid happened it was the same circumstances of the choices you're either planning to do something or you're doing something but those that are defined by their environment and their circumstances are the ones that typically end up just waiting around and planning and hoping and, you know, meditating on things, but not taking action. And I think it's the holistic approach that gives you the results that you either want or don't want. Uh, depends on how you move forward. Right. Right. Cause the fact is that there's nothing that, uh, that you or I can do with respect to the virus. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter who you are or where you live, you know, it's a global pandemic and it doesn't matter how much money you have, that's not going to stop you from, um, you know, from the being susceptible to the virus. So, yep. and the shutdowns and whatever the governments had decided to do, again, nothing we can do to uh, about that, but there's so much you can control in turn, you know, and it all starts with your thoughts and your actions. Yep. And when this first happened and back, when you think back to April, everyone had come online and so many webinars and so many conferences and, and just people offering free, um, you know, free uh, information and, and services and things like that. There was so much opportunity, even university degrees, uh, yep. uh, university courses, I mean, like a happiness course and other things like that, that there was so much out there that no matter what you wanted to do, it was there. So, yeah. you know, the opportunity was definitely there to learn and consume as much as you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. That opportunity is always there. You know, thanks to the internet, you, we have so many different resources at our fingertips and um, it's, it's unfortunate that events like this happen to bring that to light for us. But that's, you know, that's the base of my story was being forced to audit everything about my reality um, and then make a conscious decision how I want to move forward. And that's, that's why I share all I share. That's why I have these conversations. And I'm always honored to have an opportunity to share these conversations because I believe that people can change through inspiration rather than in a place of pain and suffering. And like I said, there's two types of people that are going to come out of the COVID situation. Those that are waiting, like you said, and those that are trying to figure out what they can do, you know, not, not letting it stop, stop them, but just, okay, you know, what do I do differently? How do I make this work? Not, not being a victim to what's going on because you can't control it, but you can control, like you said, the way you think, the way you feel and the way you behave. Right. Yes. And so many people have, um, taken, you know, taken this time to come up with, uh, their website. Like somebody I know who had a, you know, brick and mortar clothing boutique. She created her website. Um, even the hair salon owners were dropping off hair dye at everybody's house who, you know, the clients' houses so that they could at least do it themselves. Um, yeah, I just had listened to a podcast with a fine dining restaurant that decided <clears throat> on the Friday they were fine dining and by the Monday they were a drive through burger, yep. burger joint. Or delivery service. Yeah, like all that stuff. And, <laughs> you know, and they, they were doing, you know, and they made sure that they didn't have to uh, let anybody go. They just pivoted their services and went into something new and ended up um, being able to keep all the employees and, and uh, to keep afloat. And, yeah. and that's, whereas you see some stories of other ones that uh, are still waiting, other restaurants that are still waiting or just yeah. didn't want to change. And it's like, I guess, it, I guess it's just, yeah, it, it's just human behavior. As yeah. humans, we're always, um, we, we don't, uh, we don't like change. Yep. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the, the usual, um, the way it usually is. But the fact is that change is, is, um, 
always there as the saying goes change is the only constant right yep. because yeah. and as <laughs> entrepreneurs we also should be adaptable to change and ready to change and pivot and, yep. and things like that and and i've seen so many stories of it being done For sure. yeah and did I mean, that's, you... that's why i look at business like a sport you know being a former professional athlete um it, it trances over really well because there's mm -hmm. no given outcome in a sport like you're competing you can only control how you show up you can't control the end result so if you're just looking at the scoreboard you know like you're not going to be in the game participating you're not going to be winning um, but then new athletes come about new for me it was new you know we don't have the same platform every event we have different designs and obstacles and ramps and setups so you have to you have to learn to adapt and that means you have to be optimizing what you're doing at home so that way when you go to play the game you you can adapt to the situation and then you can thrive um, and i see that in business you know like starting out in the middle like if you've been a veteran of, of business for a while like there's things that are always coming about that you have to be ready to pivot or um, innovate or adapt to new ways of doing things and those that are resistance to change or resisting to change are the ones that are going to be left behind um, you see that same thing with social media over the years, you know, businesses that didn't want to adopt this new way of marketing, you know, they're almost irrelevant now, or some have gone out of business, you know, and it's just the same thing. But as human beings, we're hardwired for the path of least resistance. And so when change comes up, that's uncomfortable because it's not familiar. And we're so locked in our ways on a psychological and a physical level that doing something new, it, it's difficult because it's a sense of stress because it's, it's not known. And the unknown, unpredictable conditions is a sense of fear to us. And those that push through and just try to figure it out are the ones that you're seeing. Like you said, a restaurant over the weekend turned into a fine dining place, turned into an in and out spot. And it's like, all right, you know, that was a choice they made. <laughs> yeah, because they knew that they couldn't, uh, they couldn't survive if they tried to resist change and, and, and still be a fine dining restaurant. Because I don't know how well a fine... Um, fine dining meals translate to being takeout right it's i don't i don't think it's it's uh, uh you're not going to get the same quality of food when you bring it home as as if you were sitting in the restaurant so yeah so they just they figured out what to do and to go move forward with it and even when you talk about seasoned um seasoned business owners one thing everyone has had to do is really adapt to learning this you know technology depending where you were before just uh given the surgence of zoom and other other meeting uh technologies uh, everyone has had to really ramp up their knowledge of that yeah. um because it's not yeah. going away of course and <clears throat> um it's uh like again this has been a time that people can really work on honing their skills in different things that um, they may have wanted to work on and again before said they didn't have the time to do so yeah yeah no it's gonna be interesting to see what comes from this in terms of how mm -hmm. everything is is mandatory this way through zoom and web conferences and you know facetime and all that stuff and then how businesses are still doing well and I've talked to um, a bunch of friends of mine that have brick and mortar businesses or office space and things like that. And it's just like, oh, like there's like the, you know, the um, productivity is, is there, if not higher now. Um, I wonder if we're going to need this office space much longer or can we cut costs here, give our employees a better quality of work and, and life and still have great results, if not better. So it's going to be interesting to see how things shift in that manner. Um, I, I just, it's just funny how these challenges present themselves as challenges. And then it's like, oh, you reframe it. And it's like, oh, this is actually a great win for us because now we're cutting down costs here and we're able to give our employees a better, better way of living and um, showing up to work. Yeah, exactly. And I was thinking the same thing that uh, they must be getting, you know, more product productivity out of the um, people who are working from home from offices because they're not going to the kitchen and talking at the, um, you know, the coffee or wasting, like for me, for us here in Toronto, the traffic is horrible, you know, it's a big city. So traffic is terrible. Yeah. Whether you take the uh, public transit or you drive, you're guaranteed an hour's commute each way. Yep. 
and and you're going to be stressed and angry by the time you get to work in the morning. Yeah, and there's and, two uh, hours back, back that you <laughs> thought you didn't have before where you can, like you said, yeah. about meditation practice or journaling or learn something or just have more you know conversations. Like there's so many possibilities when you get that time back. Yeah, exactly. And, and also time with your family too, right? Yeah. And, and you're not stressed because I know I, I can't stand, uh, you know, the traffic. And then you add in the uh, winter too, and then it can even grow to two hours for some people, yeah. depending <laughs> if there's a snowstorm. So, um, yeah, it will be interesting to see that because right now, downtown Toronto, which is full of, you know, the huge um, office towers for the banks is empty nobody's yeah. gone back there they're all working from home so there's the, that's the only concern that's a lot of real estate yep. and uh you know that's it's uh some of them were just uh working on new towers before covid hit that have everything as well so mm -hmm. that's that's the one concerning piece but from a perspective of uh you know managing your overall health and well-being and happiness um i think it would definitely make the um employees have you know better peace of mind and more meaningful yep for sure job and life and holistic view and whatever you want to say so yeah, yeah no it's it's very interesting but what i do like too is the uh, option to um attend conferences that are elsewhere which i've done which yeah. would have required a flight and accommodation and yep. all that uh but on the other hand, too, it's, you know, we do miss in-person events and, and being in, in the room with other people. And I'm sure, as you know, being a speaker, um, you know, just feeling the energy in that room. Yeah. It's not the same. Um, yeah, it's very yeah. different. But at least now we can still do something um, and it saves people money. It saves the, you know, event organizers money, putting it all together. And it just it allows something rather than nothing. But I... I definitely prefer the in-person vibe and the energy because doing I've, I've done some talks through zoom and it's you know it's exciting you know I'm grateful to be there but it's just it's not the same when you're looking at a screen and there's just there's no like no energy there it's everyone's the just staring back at you and yep. or you catch people like, like looking at their phone I mean that's the same thing <laughs> like, you'll be in the crowd you'll see people in the crowd looking down at their phone but yeah it's a little bit more obvious when all the screens are right there and you can see people <laughs> yeah right but the, as uh, going back to what you were saying about, um, you know, it really gives us the opportunity to create something new. Um, and it, I think in so many different avenues, where, um, whether it be the corporate system, because the other thing that was uh, um, that has been totally uprooted is the education system with all the kids having to come home and then uh, working um virtually and i'm not sure exactly what's happening i'm sure it varies state to state for you down there but um here we've got the choice if you want to do it virtual or you want to be in person coming That's into cool. class and um it's uh you know it just it varies depending on places as well because uh depending on hot spots you see more people wanting virtual but and and depending on your family situation and whatever but, um, you know, the education system, then we had a problem here with long-term care homes and the neglect of the elderly. And so there were some outbreaks there. And of course, the healthcare system and the hospitals and everything like that. So like it's giving, it's disrupted all, every, all these different industries, which is giving us the chance to create something new. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's what i um... That's where uh, stress and pressure come in because, you know, if you stay consistent with trying to break through, new things emerge. And it's unfortunate that things, you know, um, don't go so well in that time, but that's just life. You know, things are always going to be up and always going to be down. It's just just a matter of how things work. So, uh, but I think that perspective is the difference, you know, just like what, what can, you know, what new can we learn from this or what can we do now that's, that we weren't maybe looking at doing before because of this. And I think that's, that's the cool thing about looking at these and um, you know, it's easier said than done, especially when you're in the moment. But if you try to reflect or reflect with that reframe <laughs> of, you know, what can I learn? What can I do differently? Or what can we, you know, take this and innovate with? I think that's, that's what um, makes a difference of the outcome for people going through this experience. Right. Exactly. And that's what, uh, 
that's what people need to, um, you know, the way to look at things. Um, and it all starts with, uh, well, having the time to be with yourself as well and, and decide what you really want. You know, what, what's your purpose? What do you want from life? What's, what are your values? As opposed to before when we were just rushing off from place to place, thinking of the next thing that had yep. to be done um, and just really crossing off your to-do list and, and, and putting off things as well, saying, oh, I don't have time. I'll do that when I have time. And, yep. and uh, yeah. you know, so we just kind of got stopped short and, and uh, just abruptly like that and now have had the chance to figure out things out yeah i think we're not living you know in the stress of gotta rush here gotta hurry up to do that gotta get to work gotta do this like all these things and now we're just like oh like we can settle we can breathe we can learn more about ourselves i think that's like the most important thing that people can can take and apply right now it's just the understanding of um getting under, like understanding who you are on a mental and emotional level um understanding you know how you respond or react and what what triggers you, what makes you tick, um, you know, observing your, your old habits and patterns and just seeing what, you know, what you can do differently in this time to, you know, optimize your state of being and your health and your quality of life. And I think that's a, I'm seeing that trend more and more, especially now as we're getting later and later into the year, more and more people have been, been noticing that and all this time to be, you know, by themselves or with their loved ones at home. It's like, oh, I didn't know I did this or I did that. And like, I'm picking up on all these habits or my partner's habits and things. And I think it's a, that's a, that's an awesome thing to be able to do. Right. Yes. Yeah. And on the health side of things as well, I think um, it also gave people the chance to really think about their health and maybe where they were neglecting it. Um, and of course having, you know, everything shut down initially and then, uh, you know, the fear of, of, of going out to, to places and everything like that. Um, people were eating more at home and eating more healthy. And, yeah. and a lot of people back when we really shut down, I did see a lot of people were baking and trying out new recipes and things like that. But, uh, you know, people were also, um, revisiting their love of cooking. Yeah. And again, you know, more healthy eating and getting out there. And yeah, uh, that's something that people will probably want to continue doing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's a great time to establish new habits because you can have all this time to observe and then mm -hmm. try out some new things. And there's no excuse of traveling or busy at work or things like that. It's just, you either do it or you don't. And you, know, you got the opportunity. So you might as well establish some new ways of living. Right, yes. And, and so you also, um, during the time when we were really shut down, I understand that you also worked on your book. Yeah, I was able to finish the rough draft um, back in April or so. So now I'm just in the editing process and uh, hasn't been a priority of mine. The main priority was just writing it. And now I've just been slowly going over editing myself and then getting to a point where um, I want to hire on a team to help me edit it and publish it and all that stuff. So um, it's been years in the making, but over those years, a lot of things have happened in my life that I've been able to learn new perspectives and get new knowledge from and add into the book. So um, it's, it's been good. But yeah, this time, you know, it was March 12th. I got home from a trip two days later here in North Carolina, uh, everything shut down. And so it, it just allowed me to, cause I was trying to, it, it's been months. I've been trying to manage writing while traveling while other work and things and, just being home and just being able to dedicate hours at a time to writing each chapter. Um, it allowed me to be able to do that and to uh, not try to like, you know, be on a plane trying to like catch yeah. up on sleep or time changes and trying to write and be, you know, so it was good. Much more focused. It, it allows yeah. you to, you know, to, because, and that's the thing when you're trying to fit things in and squeeze into little, little time slots versus having that focused time to spend on something, you're, you're much more productive that way. Yeah, creativity, I see it as something that's um, sparked from inspiration, not just being forced, like, sit down and be creative now. And it's like, oh, I don't no. know, no, words aren't coming to mind right now. <laughs> but when I decide, I'm like, I got some time, I don't have to rush, I don't have to think, okay, I got an hour, then I got to go to this meeting. It's like, all right, I can take some time, I can try something. No, nah, that doesn't sound good. Let me, let me back it up. And then you know, you can just brainstorm and like you can get into it and like let, let get into that flow state really 
Um, but when you're stressed, your focus is so narrowed and you're just not in it and it just doesn't work out so well. No, you'd be just focused. Oh, I only have half an hour and you just be, that would still be in your mind. You'd be focused on the minute yep. and, and being afraid you're going to run out of time and then you'll end up. Yeah, exactly. Not getting anything done. And I know with creativity, it's not something that um, <clears throat> you can just turn off and on like you're saying, because I know when I've gone to uh, uh, <clears throat> felt the need to start creating some new jewelry piece, um, sometimes I'll create something and I'll look at it and think, oh, uh, this is horrible. I do not like it. And then I'll know that it's just not the time for me to be, to be working on that. And then other times I'll, I'll start doing it and then I'll create something and I'll, it'll be just perfect. And I'll be, you know, inspired by it after. And, and, uh, then I know that, you know, that's the time yep. to be creative yeah. for sure. and to be creating it. So, yeah, for sure. So what, um, yeah. So how, how, what have you done to pivot your business during this time then when, in terms of the speaking? Because you had all these in-person speaking events. Um, have you done, so you've done some virtual speaking, I guess. Yeah, I've done some virtual speaking, but I think the <laughs> biggest, the biggest thing that came from the challenge of COVID for me personally was, you know, two thirds of my revenue basically went away and that was speaking yeah. opportunities and then working with other brands to create content around education and motivation. Um, and I, that's something I've evolved from BMX into my, um, you know, my business today in terms of helping people with their health and, you know, getting people inspired and motivated. Um, so we, we were still working on different things, just in a different manner. Um, so when COVID occurred, it was speaking engagements all canceled, um, brand partnerships that were in the works and different contracts kind of put on the back burner and some just totally dropped off. Actually, some of my contacts getting let go, um, that was a mess. So then I was, um, the, the one third I still had was some of my coaching clients. And so um, come April, I hired on, um, a coach to help me with my business and then my own personal life um, in terms of my mental and emotional aspect and then how that manifests into my business. And so it was like perfect timing because we really highlighted that problem of two thirds of my revenue was focused on outside sources. It wasn't me. It was involving me, but it was nothing out of my, it was everything out of my control in terms of not my own events and nothing I could right. it to do virtual and it was other brands, but I had my, my business of helping other people. And so I've just kind of gone all in on that for this time being of just focus on building my clientele and um, just learning more about myself and um, bringing more of that to my clients. And so it's been good in that manner. At first, it was a little shock because I also had an employee and um, on full time salary and then two thirds oh. of my revenue just disappeared. And so I was like, oh, what do I do? And then um, just got re realigned and refocused. And yeah, it's been it's been great now. So. Um, you know, I, I have that learning for when things do kind of normalize where we can travel and we can go out to events and I am getting asked to speak at events um, and work with brands. It's like, all right, I know that those are all just cherries on top. Um, but, you know, my, my main focus needs to be building my clientele and, um, you know, everything else is just kind of bonus. And don't, yeah, and don't focus on that as being, uh, yeah, your, your main source of revenue. Yeah. I know a lot of speakers who... Um, uh, and event uh, event planners too, who who basically in one day saw their revenue go almost you know pretty much to zero yeah. with with everything being canceled, especially for the um, event planners because there's nowhere you can't run any events. So yep. um, yeah, so they've had to massively pivot into some kind of um, space, whether it be online conferences and running online events or um experiences or something uh, just like travel as well travel agents who had yep. to again same thing just gone so quickly um but that's that's a great point to for people to look at that and realize that maybe you don't want that much of your revenue to be based on outside sources yep uh have you yeah. read the book uh, rich dad poor dad I have not actually. Okay. But oh, yep. I'm sure you heard of it. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a classic. Um, yeah. I read that at the beginning of this year for the first time, and it's just something he talks about, like mining your business. 
And he talks about the difference of working for someone and then having your own business and people that work for someone else. That's cool. But he encourages people to also figure out like a side hustle or something that they can grow to the point where that becomes their full time gig. And then obviously, you know, him being an investor, he talks about investing into things and then that revenue paying for all your, your gadgets and toys that you want and um, for your business to, you know, he just refers to as mining your business and oh, you just okay. get that going. So that way, what I experienced doesn't happen. Um, so it was like perfect timing where I read that book, everything mm -hmm. happened, hired on a coach to help me in my business. And then now we're, we're uh, you know, we're focused. Yeah. So you'll be ready for the next one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, which hopefully we don't have. Um, yeah, so, th and this is, that's, that brings up another great point, because this is a great time for people to, even if you are employed, and, um, you know, you're working from home, this is a great time for you to start developing some kind of side hustle, yeah. working on something, figuring out what, what is, there's so much out there, and um, uh, a lot of established, um, established areas that you can go into when it comes to direct sales, too. The, the whole direct sales industry has boomed like crazy being online and you don't even have to worry about uh, holding any inventory or anything like that. So yeah. it is, uh, yeah, this is a good time for people to, to think about that because with the internet and everything, we have so, so many resources that, uh, that you can use to, to create a side, you know, side business and oh, yeah. uh, this, and again, you, you have the time to do it now. So it's, it's, it, I think a lot of people have looked at that as well. And some other people, you know, have lost their jobs and things like that uh, and, um, have done so as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even my girlfriend, she's a licensed athletic trainer here at a, a private high school. And she's always been passionate about photography. And she used to do that a little bit back in college to make some extra money. And she started up a little side business of photography. And she's been doing really well with that. And um, now with them being back at school and her back at work, she's doing both of them. And, you know, that, that was, a uh, you know, an idea that came from the challenge this year. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool to see that and to watch that, you know, and, uh, her grow in that field and to be able to do something she's passionate about, um, in two different ways. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Going back to things that, you know, things you liked as a kid, and things you always wanted to do, but, uh, you know, so so much has changed if you think about 20 years ago or something. Um, you can make money from many different avenues than you couldn't 20 years ago, for sure. Yeah. And yeah. Who, who would have ever thought that you can make millions from being, you know, doing videos on TikTok. So, uh, you know, so the opportunity is it, it, uh, so much, like I say, has changed. Things that you, as a kid, your parents would have said you could never make money doing that. Well, now you can. So yep. it's uh, a whole different world and who knows what it's going to be like going forward. Um, you know, I, I, well, I was going to say after this, but it's not really after this. I don't know. When we come through this, I, I don't really know what, uh, you know, what's yeah. going to happen going <laughs> forward. But, but I think that... Uh, like it's going back to you know i don't think there'll be i don't know if there'll be the same live events and the same volume and because it's very expensive for people to put on those those live events so i'm sure everybody's going to be revisiting what they've done in the past yeah. and looking at new options and and i mean the one thing as i said is it's great that we can have the virtual side of things as well yeah no no doubt for sure yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Josh, for giving me your time to to talk about everything. Um, and I will put your information up underneath the interview as well. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time as well, Michelle. And thanks for the opportunity to share. And I've, uh, I've enjoyed it. And I'm glad that we connected last week. Yes, yes, that was great. Um, and uh, yeah, so you're basically just continuing building your business and and uh, your coaching and everything you just yeah. you can do you can do it all virtual so yep yeah yep. yeah so that's great awesome all right so i'll put your information up there again and um how long till your book would be ready i'm not sure 
Well, that, I've been asked that from a lot of people that know yeah. that I, uh, I finished the rough draft. So I'm not sure. It's not, that's what my coach and I were working on. It's not a priority for me right now. Um, I want to continue focused on my business and growing that and then uh, be able and to. Then uh, do, and then launch your book. That's probably a yeah. good, yeah. yeah. It's probably a so, good avenue as well. Yeah. So we're not sure, but the goal is at least sometime next year because this year I wrote it. So next year we'll uh, be getting out. It's crazy that it's already mid November. Um, I know. I November actually. <laughs> was thinking about this morning and uh i i don't know it uh, now march seems so long ago yeah but um but, so but it's quick. hard to believe that we're almost at the end of 2020 yeah so yeah well yeah. so we'll see but um for now just trying to have more of these conversations just see how i can um provide some perspective and some support for other people and just continue working on my business and working on myself uh, personally as well so it's all, yes. uh, it's all we can do and just enjoy whatever extra perks come along the way until we get back to uh, being able to get out and about and uh, seeing our friends and family in different places of the world and traveling and all that stuff. So, Yes, yes. I look forward to being able to do that again. Um, all right. So thank you again. And I will, um, as I said, put this information up underneath the interview. And thank you for your time and stay safe and healthy. Yeah, thanks. You do the same. I appreciate you and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay.